Hello, hello everyone. I want you for a minute to imagine that you are coming from another country with $1,800 in your pocket, no connections, no business leads, don't not any intention to go to university, and you're just here because you're going, I'm gonna start something different, something new, but I don't want anyone. That sounds pretty scary to me, and we're gonna hear an awesome story today from Alon from Israel, who came at around the age of 21 and has started many companies over, started from zero several times, and now has built an incredibly successful company called 90X. He is the CEO and creator of 90X and is an expert in goal setting. And I actually ran into him through some other uh, connections that I have, you know, in these joint ventures that we get to create in business building. And I am a person who loves to do 90 day plans. And someone said, you've got to check out this journal. And I was like, sure, why not? And as I was looking through it, I realized all of the things that are in there are stuff that I love and just kind of free form in my blank journal. And so I ordered one and I'm using it and it's freaking awesome. We, and we're gonna hear all of his story, the story of building his company. We're gonna talk about goals. So let's welcome today on the show, Alon. So glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me and I appreciate that intro. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, tell us. Okay, I wanna know the, the whole story of yeah. how you got here. What made you make that bold decision and just courageously go for it? Sure, sure. So I, uh, I moved here about 23, 24 years ago from Israel, from Tel Aviv, after serving three years in the Israeli Air Force. You know, I decided I wanted to try something different. Usually after you finish school, in America, people go to more school. In Israel, you don't. You go to the army, uh, whether you like it or not. And I, I didn't like it. But I did it my three years. I served because I don't like rules. I don't like people to tell me what to do, when to do it, and how to do it without giving me an explanation. So that's why I never worked for anyone. Uh, but uh, when I first got here, you know, I didn't have much opportunity being a foreigner. Uh, so my first job, all right, it wasn't an entrepreneur. I, I picked up trash for $5.25 for three out for three for three years and then while I was going to school because I had to maintain my student visa I didn't complete college but I had to have something and then I also was lucky enough to land another job at night cleaning shopping center so that was pretty cool <laughs> for like 10 bucks an hour and I did that for about three years but fast forward once I was able to actually work here legally I started uh, my first business was actually selling insurance and then from there I moved into construction and then from there I moved into photography but every business I started was starting from zero, but I also, cause I, that's when I got here. I, I just, you know, I did the lowest thing I could do is pick up trash for $5 and 25 cents. And that's what I did. So it didn't worry me to start from zero, but I'm also a person who takes action and has a bigger vision. Uh, and that's the way I was able to create all those companies as well. Um, fast forward to today, 2017, that's when I actually decided to launch 90X and create the product because it was, an idea. Most of us have an idea and we sit on it and we don't execute. Uh, and the idea was there for about three years, but I procrastinated, right? I mean, I'm sure it resonates. Uh, I procrastinated and I didn't do that. And it cost me a lot of money now that I'm looking back. But anyways, I, I decided to launch 90X because this is the system that I've been using for myself since I got here. It wasn't in a form of a plan or a book or a sheet, but it was always like, what's my vision? What am I willing to do today to reach my goal? Pretty much the system that we, that we do. Uh, and then I was looking for a system. I couldn't find another planner, another planner, another minute. Couldn't find anything. And I said, you know what? Eventually I decided to just do my thing and create my product. And I work from worst case scenario. What's the worst thing that can happen if it doesn't work out? Mm. You know? And that would gave me the drive to actually go ahead and launch it no matter what. And nice. not worry about the end result. You have to worry about the impact that I could create if this does work. Um, and that's it. And you're here today, 2020. Wow. Uh, about so you've been in business for three years. You know, I've been in business full time for 14 months. Okay. Awesome. Right? Because yep. I had a photography business that I was working as well, that I created as well. Started from zero, no leads, no potential. And within, ten, within 10 months, I was able to grow to a six-figure company, a photography business that was thriving for about eight years. But, you know, as a business owner, you got to decide what, what do you want to do? Like, I mean, do you want to do this full time? Do you want to do this part time? You got to decide because you cannot run two businesses and be in complete focus uh, 100% on each business. It just, you can't. Yeah. Can't, you just can't be in two relationship and give this attention. You can't, you just can't do that. So you got you to gotta pick whichever one you want. And I decided to go with the nine days because I saw the bigger potential, bigger impact it could create. 
mm -hmm. uh, by really helping people through support guidance and help reach their goals uh, because I didn't have that. I was doing everything I did. I did, kind of did it by myself. I learned trial and error. And so finally I decided to, this was uh, a part-time. We were shipping those from my garage with my kids. Uh, and then we decided to just, you know, let's, let's just take a leap of faith. Yes. It's, it's a lot of product. It's a lot of debt, but, but I see the bigger picture. I don't so let great. my current situation dictate my future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You said so many great things that I want to, I want to hit upon touch upon. So first entrepreneurial mindset, so powerful for everyone listening. You know, you reminded me, I, I don't think I've ever shared this on this podcast and probably most people don't know this, but I, similarly, I got pregnant at 20 and dropped out of college and my, my then husband was in college and we both, we tried to swap our daughter between classes and do all these things. And he was just super stressed trying to get an engineering degree. And he's like, I can't manage this. So I decided to drop out and we were poor, you know, just like barely scraping by taking out max student loans. And I, you know, I was always very entrepreneurial. And so I got, I looked in the paper and I found an office cleaning job at night. And so I would put my daughter in the, in our little backpack and carry her <laughs> around and go around and vacuum the offices and dump the trash. And it was probably like eight bucks an hour, or maybe 10. I don't know. It was really not a lot of money. And it was the only thing that I could figure out to do with a baby and still make money. And so I always had that really entrepreneurial spirit. You know, I was always looking for ways to make money from home. I did network marketing and, you know, I looked at, um, it was like, bookkeep it, I was a bookkeeper I mean on and on and on it sounds really similar to you, exactly. you know, that, that spirit of going for it and trying to make something out of what you know and your skill set yeah you, you got to you, I mean you have to I mean for me it was more of a survival and it was same yeah. for you it yeah. was a survival like I did this or we just go beg and that's not an option so and I don't want to lean on the government and say no feed me give me like that's not my thing uh, but, but, you know, we kind of figure out what, this is the option. This is this worst case scenario. The good thing is we can only go up. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. so that's what, what I did. I mean, there was a lot of other jobs. I even, I remember having a job for like two days cause I couldn't do it anymore is knocking door to door and selling like coupon books or whatever, uh, you know, I was oh, like, wow. there's no way I'm doing this, but I, I did what I got to do. Cause I yeah. tested it all, but it always led back to the end where I, I got to work for myself. I got to create my own thing because I don't like what other people are dictating and telling me what to do. Yeah. I mean, and nothing bad about it. People doing their nine to five and happy. Great. Keep doing it. It's a lot less stressful. That's for sure. But the thing is, I don't want to have anybody to have uh, my future in their hand. Yeah. And that's why I'm in control. 100%. We are in control of our thoughts. We are, are in control of our future. And I want to be control of my business and what I want my life to look like. Sometimes it's not easy. You know that we're entrepreneurs. It's never easy. However, I just always look to my bigger why and my bigger impact and how I can, you know, how this is all will unfold in the end. Yeah, um, I love this. So true. So in that entrepreneurial mindset, how would you describe it? You know, what's the entrepreneurial spirit or the entrepreneurial mindset? What does it mean to you? Yeah, you know what? I didn't even know what entrepreneur means about a couple of years ago, three years ago, because I was a business owner. Uh -huh. uh, but for me, it was always creating something from nothing. You yeah, know, it's really taking that thing. And then I, when I understood the definition of entrepreneur, because everybody thinks they're an entrepreneur, but I mean, really look at yourself. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a CEO? Or are you an employee of the business? Really think about it, because if you're doing tasks that an employee does, then you're not an entrepreneur and you're not the CEO. You're an employee. And that took a while, you know, to understand. And what really helped me grow is when I understood that, that I'm not going to do those tasks. I'm not going to do the small things thinking I'm a business owner working for myself or I'm actually doing it. A task. You know, I, I coach a lot of people and I have a membership community that, that we help and grow their business. And a lot of them do tasks for like four bucks an hour after it's all said and done. Yeah. You know, and they think like, oh, I have this business and I'm doing this. I was like, well, let's break it down. And when you really start thinking differently as a CEO, as a six, six figure, seven figure, eight figure CEO, then you look at things differently. And that's, that's for me is that inspiration. That's for me is that different mindset. So we yeah. got to look at things, you know? Yeah. I want to dig there too. I think a lot of people worry that delegation is going to cost them money, but when you're yes. delegating properly, well, it's it going to cost you money. It's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> it's going to cost you a lot of money. 100%.
<laughs> but which money are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Well, and like you're saying, when I sit down with people and actually have them track, like what is the dollar per hour activity that you're doing? And could you delegate it out to somebody else who's at 80% of, you know, they're creating at 80% of what you could, why wouldn't you delegate it out? 100%. You know, and, and most people those don't have that mindset. That you, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there, I think the, the, there's no answer, but I mean, it's the worry because I get it. I've been there. Like, I mean, I was a photographer. I was doing the editing. I was doing the shooting. I was doing the albums. I was doing everything. And I was like, yeah, I'm a photographer. Great. Where well, you're not, buddy. You're an employee. And when I started saying, great, I'm just shooting. That's all I'm doing is I'm just shooting and meeting with the clients to book the event. Uh-huh. But I'm not doing the editing. I'm not doing the album. I'm not doing the, anything else. And actually start, then, okay, well, now you're a business owner that's running a business and not the business is running you, right? Yeah. And for, for anybody that's listening from your listeners that, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to grow. I want to grow my business. Then really sit down. And what I tell my members always is, you know, do write down all the tasks that you're doing right now, all the tasks that you enjoy doing and doing right now, and then do the, another list for all the tasks that you, you do right now, but you don't like to do. And start small by hiring, there. get a virtual assistant, get somebody else to start doing those $20, $30 weekly even pay if you got to do to really see the difference because then it will free out your time to be the visionary and then, you know, grow your business, right? Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Because that's what we, we don't do is like, oh, I don't want to hire and pay somebody. I am happy to pay my employees. I'm really excited about it. I don't have 30 of them, so don't get it wrong. I have a bunch of subs, but in-house I only have two people plus one virtual that does all the customer support and then everything else like the Amazon and all the Facebook ads are all subs, yeah. but it took time to build, but I'm happy to be because I don't have to focus about it. I don't have to get stressed about it. I can just deal with the visionary and they go execute. Yeah. Let, let's go really practical for people listening and I can give some tips too. Who, how would you tell people to delegate? How do they find the people to delegate to? So that's, yeah, that's going back to that list. You create a list yep. of all the tasks that you're doing right now. Create a list of all the tasks that you're doing right now, but you hate doing. That is frustrating yeah. you. If you tell me to write emails, it frustrates me. If you tell me to start packing stuff, it frustrates me. If you tell me to, I don't know, write sales pages, it frustrates me. Yeah. Therefore, I hired somebody to take over that so I don't have to be frustrated. Yeah, it gets me more excited. Now I have the team to work with. So, so look at your business. I mean, I'm not, I, whatever people businesses are like for instance if you're a photographer then the, maybe the editing maybe it's something yeah. that you don't like to do then do maybe it's posting on social media you don't like to do find somebody to do that start small you can do locally you can do get a student you can get a VA you can get a intern you can do many many things yeah but start small but understand that if you're giving somebody that task to do it what would you do with the time if you're going home and flipping channels on the TV then keep doing that task. But if you're saying, you know, that time gives me that one hour for myself, even to go to the gym and work out and, and really clean myself, it's worth it. Really look at the difference that, okay, I'm doing this and this is going to free out that one or two or three hours and I'm not frustrated, but I'm going to think about the business, how it could grow, let the people execute. And I think that's where the mindset start, uh, start shifting, awesome. but it takes yeah. that practice. That's yeah, what yeah, I would yeah, tell well my members. Definitely. I wanted to share with everyone that idea of, you know, I'm, at first you make me think of so many different things. One of them is that we all have the same amount of time in a day. And 100%. if you don't delegate, it's going to be really hard for you to ever get to the seven, eight figure mark. You could definitely get to the set six figure mark solo, but as you start to scale and grow your business, you're going to have to add people. And of course you want to be aligned with your highest value system and doing what you're best at and what you love doing. And you're going to want to hire people who are best at what they do and love what they're doing. So, um, and align with your vision too. Exactly. So yeah. I, what, you know, I wanted to give people some really practical resources. I found in, in, I, I, I went to my local university where I taught and I asked my colleagues, you know, what are, who are some students in classes that you really think are responsible and amazing. And I found an incredible intern who was in the marketing department who had done an internship at PBS and she does incredible stuff and she loves what she's doing. And then I also hired someone. If, if those of you listening are looking for people to bring onto your team, or upscale your business, indeed.com, I-N-D-E-E-D.com. Yes, we use awesome that one. Awesome resource. I like, just found Zoe, which is all the content, and we found her over there. We yeah. used to use Craigslist, and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, now indeed. I, I got 30 applications in one day. 
and yeah. it was amazing. And I have an incredible new team member from there too. So, you know, Daniel and Zach, they kill it. And it's just, so, so think of those, you can go to your, go to get an, in, an intern. I know a lot of people that even use unpaid interns because internships, yeah. people are looking for that experience. So it doesn't even have to cost you money. So if you're thinking about delegating, look for it, branch out and expand your ideas on what's possible. Um, another one even is, um, have you heard of Fiverr? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's an Israeli company, by the way. Ah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So Fiverr, great for making logos, all video stuff, all kinds of stuff. And you can find yeah. $5 Up, an Upwork as well. I mean, and, there's a lot yeah, of sources. Upwork. Right? So I just want to share those with people in case you don't actually know some of the easy ways to hire VAs, hire assistants. Um, okay. Let's talk about, I, I want to know, what do you do to overcome fear in, in your business building adventures? Great. I mean, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, everybody's scared. I'm scared all, most of the time and I have fears. And But, you know, fear is there to keep us safe. So when fear comes, you understand it's just there to protect you, to keep you safe, but it's not going to help you grow. So if you're okay with that, then that's fine. Then, then you keep that, you stay with that fear. But when fear comes to me and I feel that in my stomach, I feel it in my gut, I then understand that it's time for me to step out of that box and take the leap of faith and trust the process because fear is there to keep me safe. It's like, this is our box. We all try to stay there. And when you understand that you step out of the box and it's uncomfortable because it should be uncomfortable, even if you look at it as small, let's, let's look at this metaphor, going to the gym right now, if you're just used to pick up 20 pounds and now you're picking up 60, that's, that's going to hurt. That's going to be hard, but that's you trying something different, but eventually you're going to get good at it through repetition. So overcoming fear for me is accepting that it's there, understanding that it's there. You know, I know that it's there to keep me safe, but do I want to stay safe or do I want to try and grow? And then you make that decision over there. And if you don't want to do it in a big, big jump, then, then start small. Then start small. And again, it all, it all depends on why the fear comes, what it is. If you want to start a business, then I work, like I said, from worst case scenario. If I do this task right now, and it doesn't happen. It doesn't work. Let's say worst case scenario, I want to launch this thing and it flops on the face. Great. That's the, what's the worst that can happen? Maybe I lose some time, I lose some money and it didn't work out. Does it make me bad? Does it make me like I'm a failure? No, that product itself didn't work. What can I learn from it and how can I grow? So again, it depends on how the fear comes because it comes in different forms and shapes, right? And different times. Yeah. So it's just understanding that it's always there to keep you safe and you're always safe. But if you want to stay in that safe place, then that's fine. But if you want to grow, then you got to step up. You got to step up, acknowledge the fear, be in peace with it, and then, and then try it. That's the way I tackle it. That's the way I teach my members in our business community to tackle it as well. Awesome. Okay, great. Yeah. Let, now let, let's talk goals. I'm, I, yeah. I love your system. So let's talk first. Why did you choose a 90 day structure? Let, let's right. go there. Yeah. So, so the 90 days, so most people have goals, right? We all have goals. Every day you have a goal. Maybe your goal is to go to the market. Maybe your goal is to, to, to do something, but we all have goals. Uh, but when it comes to personal goals, I feel that 90 days is a good amount of time. Now you could do one year goal. You could do five year goals. Most jobs that you hire people to ask you, what's your five year goal? Well, who cares if you can't reach your one year goal? Actually, mm -hmm. who cares if you can't reach your weekly goal or your monthly goal? Yeah. But 90 days is there because it's good enough time for you to create something and measure it and stay motivated for the next 90 days. Because if you cannot complete it in 90 days, then you're not going to reach your one-year goal and you're not going to reach your five goals. I get 100% guarantee it's not going to happen. Yeah. But 90 days, the reason for that is a couple of things. It's easy to measure in quarters because that's the way we work, 365 days. We're going to measure it in quarterly with the market. And then in addition to that, it's easy to monitor in 90 days. It's a lot better because if it didn't work out in 90 days, at least you didn't spend one year doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and you stayed enough longer motivation. The way we teach our community and our business members is what it is that you want to create. Let's look 90 days out. What it is that you want to create. Let's say April 15, you want to create, I don't know, a membership community or our business, right? Now let's work backwards. Let's come back today to today. And let's start planning every day. What actions are we willing to take? Now I'm going to give you the whole system, but right now we're just jumping ahead. What actions am I willing to do every week, every day towards the nine days? Now it's a lot more measurable. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying stay realistic, but it's a lot more measurable than I say, okay, what's your one year goal? Let me now work for the whole year. You're not going to stay motivated for one year, you know, yeah. but you're going to stay motivated weekly, daily, 90 days. It's a lot easier to measure. 
So that's the whole reason why I decided to do 90 days, not 100 days, not 10 days, not three weeks. 90 days were good. It all planned out in quarterly. I also work with, uh, I believe in the, not believe in the stock market, but I use the stock market. And I also like that every company kind of checks what they did this quarter and how they want to go, go the next quarter. Because that's the way it's designed. If we, I guess we were 400 year a day, then we would do 100 day increments. It's a lot, a lot easier to measure, so it's easy. Yeah, to- yeah, so smaller chunks. Have you heard of Parkinson's Law? No. Okay, so this is awesome. And, and the reason I like 90 day goals are, is because work expands to fill the time allotted. That's Parkinson's Law. So if you set a year long goal, people will procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate until the last couple of months of the year. <laughs> they go, yeah. oh, I've got all this time. I've got a full year. I'll just and do we, it then. We don't really put the pressure on. It's a really interesting way to dictate your whole life. Like I tell people, even each and every day, I put in the method of Parkinson's law where you go, okay, work expands to fill the time allotted. Am I going to give myself 90 minutes to check my email or 30? And if you give yourself 30, you answer those emails fast. You know, you've got 30 minutes to do it. So it's similar to the 90 day, the small chunk. I really like the idea of it because in 90 days you can do so much and you can project plan and you can forecast. And then for the next 90 day block, you get to actually see what's on the horizon based on what you were able to produce in that first 90 day block. Yes. Um, also, you know, I, th- I know I think it's interesting in terms of annualized thinking if we do it in quarters. I'm actually starting your uh, ni- the 90 days to- on uh, February, February 1st because I have a project that I really want to get out there. And so Beautiful. I was like, well, I'm just going to use it this way. And so I, I like that sh- the way that you set up your planner is that it doesn't have to be based on the start of the year and that you nope. can do it at any point in time. Any day, any time. And that's the reason. It's because it does. I don't want the plan to be giving you the reason you're going to procrastinate. Yeah. There's no dates. You fill up your own dates. And if you mess up in a week, that's fine. You keep going. You just keep going. It's there to help you keep going. And that was one of the things. When you have a date, you're like, okay, great. I'll start in the beginning of the year. I'll start in next week. I'll start next month. Well, if we're talking about the 30th and you're talking about a couple of days, I understand. That makes sense. Maybe you can work on your goals and your whys and your actions and then execute February 1st. You know, yeah, but yeah. but at least you can get going. Yeah. It's not there to be perfect. And that's what the planner is. It's not a perfect thing, but it's a guide to help you get going. And yeah. I didn't want the dates to be there like, oh man, I can't do it. I got to wait until March 1st. Away. Yeah, I love that. It's very, it's, it, there's a structure, but it's also yes. a loose structure. Um, so tell yeah. us, what, tell us more about the 90 day system that you use. Yeah, I, I want to tell you actually more about, about the goal system and how oh, to perfect. actually write your goals, because I think yeah. the 90 day system is there. I think the first thing that anybody that wants to write their goals, if you haven't written a goal, if you want to write a goal, if you've been using goals and it hasn't been working, start from your vision. What is your vision? How would you visualize your product being done? So before this product, I'm holding the 90 explainer, before this product was created, I already knew in my mind how it's going to look, how it would feel, how big it is, more or less. I kind of had a vision and that's the vision that I was holding from. Okay. But that's when you create a product. But let's say if your goal is to be six figure CEO, right? Let's say a lot of us want to, a lot of people want to be a six figure CEO. Then I would also start operating like one. I would also start thinking like one. I will start being the one right now and working from my vision, not to the vision. Okay, and that's the biggest step because most people have a vision and say, great, how can I get there? Well, what is stopping you from being that person right now? And that's when people don't get it. But if you start thinking about it, I think, I know you understand what I'm saying, but what is holding you from being that person right now? Having this product completed. In your mm-hmm. mind, who says that it's not possible? I feel that I have that possible. I'm living that day every day. So we start with that vision. Second step is our goal. Okay, so now you're going to write down your goal. What is your goal for the next 90 days? Most people will say, I would like to bring in $100,000. I would like to buy a house. I would like to lose weight. Well, why can't you write it in a form where it's already achieved? I love that I'm a six-figure CEO and I was able to do this, or I love the house that I'm living. Like, live, ride that moment because it has to align with your vision. Working from your vision and having the goal written down is it's already achieved. And yeah. again, I know we're rushing through it because this could take 10 episodes to go through this whole thing. <clears throat> so I want to give you guys the steps of how to do it. And you can start with, you have the plan or a piece of paper, you can start, but start with your vision and align it with your goal. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Third thing is the why. Remember we said 90 days, the momentum that's going to get you going for the next 90 days. Your why has to be strong. If you want to achieve any goal, there should be a why. If you, your goal this week is to go to the market, 
because you want to buy a course. So that's your why. That's the reason you want to go to the market. Same thing for your goal. If you want to reach six figures, then why do you want to reach six figures? Because that why is so important that people skip it because that why is what's going to keep you going for the next 90 days. When you want to quit, when you say this is not working, you got to go back to that why, whether it's losing weight, whether it's buying a house, whether it's building a business, whether it's launching a product, that why is very, very important. So have a strong why, which is your, and your own why. You don't have to give excuses to anybody. This is your why. Why do I want to reach this goal? And write down as much as you can to make that as powerful as you can because that's the why you're going to go back to to keep going for the next 90 days. That's what we said. 90 days is a lot easier to keep the momentum. If it was why it was one year, it's a lot harder. You can have your one-year goal, but then break it down to 90-day chunks. So far, are we good on that? Yep, yep, yep. Fourth step is the action. This is where most people quit or they get stuck because the next step is the actions. What actions am I willing to take towards the goal? So this is the metaphor I use all the time. If I told you to draw something right now, you will probably ask me, well, what do you want me to draw? Do you want me to use color? Do you want a car? Do you want a house? What do you want me to draw? You just say draw. But if I give that same task to my kids right now, my two and three-year-old, and I say draw, I don't even have to tell them draw. They took the piece of paper and they get going. Okay? They have no limitations. They're not working from their past beliefs. They have no, they're just going to get going because they just are free of anything. Us as adults, we always stop because we say, well, how can I do that task? Because I don't know if that's, well, that's too hard. That's too big. I tried that before and that's not going to work. We come up with all those excuses, yeah. right? That's what happens. So when it comes to the action section, you have your vision, you have your goal, you have your why. All it is is write a list. I just did a one-on-one coaching with one of my clients yesterday and it was our first session. I said, well, all I want you to do today. That's all I want you to do is write down as many actions that you think that you could do. I didn't say when, by when, how you're going to do it, nothing. All the lists of actions that you could do eventually towards the goal. If it's 10 tasks or it's 100 tasks, it doesn't matter. All you're going to do from there, now you have a pile of actions that line up with your way to your goal. And then we're going to start taking it daily. Think about it again. It's a lot easier to understand this way. If you were driving from LA to San Diego, you don't need to know all the, act, all the exits, all the Starbucks, all the McDonald's down the street. You're going to know, you're going to trust that it's going to come eventually when you need it to, right? You're going to know it's there, right? I mean, I'm sure nobody stops today if they have a three-hour travel and say, well, I wonder if there's going to be a Starbucks at exit 23. <laughs> I doubt. But if you do, then great, but I don't think so. Uh, you're going to trust that it's going to come as in it's going to unfold as you get there. Same for free actions. Write down all the actions. Don't worry about when you're going to use it, how you're going to do it. And those are the, really the four core fundamentals that you need for goal settings. And then I make the daily very, very simple. When you start using your planner or this planner or any planner, uh, hopefully it's in the same lineup or if it's a blank journal, whatever, ask yourself this question today. What is my intention today towards my goal? What am I going to do today that's going to move the needle towards my goal? Not the to-do list. This is where most people get it wrong. They spend all day scratching off their to-do list, but those to-do lists are tasks that you can either delegate that are not as important that somebody else can do, and they're not moving the needle towards your goal. Your intention towards your goal is if your goal is to, again, let's use a house, okay, because I don't know what everybody's wearing, but let's say buy a house. Maybe your intention today is to actually find a realtor, or maybe your intention today is actually as simple as driving around neighborhoods that you would love to live in. Maybe your intention today is to actually just browse around homes. I don't know, whatever it may be, but it has to line up with your goal. And if you look at it this way, I broke it down, it's 1.1% every day. If you do a task that's equal 1.1% every day, within 90 days, you will have 99.9% .9 completed. You know, and that's what I say. Just use that one task every day towards the next 90 days and then see how that helps you uh, move forward towards your goal. And when you think about it this way, it just makes everything a lot lighter, a lot easier, and it should be lighter, it shouldn't be heavy. But when you sit down in the morning and you say, well, I wonder what I can do today to get close to my goal, that's a wrong question to ask. But when you have an intention, okay, I'm going to do one, two, three, like my intention today is to do this podcast. And then the second thing is I want to work on, on a banner for our website that's going to do the difference between the thing. I don't want to do it. I just want to create the design center to my designer, but that's my intention today for that task. That's it. Yeah. And then once I'm done, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to be done for the day. 
I, I want to reinforce this for everybody because <laughs> I always say if you don't fill your day with max potential actions, your day will fill with chaotic, draining distractions. And it's yeah. about planning, right? So in your planner, you have a very specific way to go, here's this goal and here's the actions I'm going to take to meet that goal. Will you talk a little bit about the difference? Because I think it's really critically yes. important to talk about the difference between a to-do list and an action plan because 100%. people get so stuck there thinking, well, what really is an action? You know, what's an action? What's the difference? So <clears throat> exactly. talk about that a little bit. Yes, and actually in the planner, I added another section uh, for the people that are using the new planners. Um, and what I did is I created a to-do list, a follow-do. It's a word that we created or invented, I guess, whatever. Uh, follow-do, where you write down tasks that are going to take you under two minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Maybe a quick text. Hey, Mark, I need your information. Or, hey, Amanda, here's the link for the Zoom call. Or something that's quick. Write down all those tasks that are under two minutes. Maybe a quick post that all you got to do is put that, copy, paste, boom, plug, done. Two, two minutes. Now, the reason I created it because most people get overwhelmed with the day, how it looks, because they already get worried, right? And then the next session is tasks that are not as important that I could also delegate, mm -hmm. right? Not as important that I can also, you can think, okay, well, I can have what's the name do this. I can have Zoe do that. I can have William do this. Done. And then I work or say, what are the tasks today? Like if I were to do something, maybe my goal, okay, so one of my goals, this is just, I'm sharing this with you right now. One of my goals yesterday that I wanted to do is I wanted to be on, set on 100 podcasts this year. That's my goal. So I created a post, well, Zoe did, created a post, and she put it in some of my network community. And my goal today is to go to those posts and see which one I want to be on and how it, we already got 45 responses by just putting it out there. So my task is to be on podcasts, right? That, my action is to be on podcasts. That's going to move the needle. My bigger vision. Again, I'm not talking about my tongue. My bigger vision. So when you understand that those small tasks are not as important because you can do it under two minutes, right? If it's replying to email, that's when you start thinking, well, maybe I should do that or should start delegating. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to move the needle forward that aligns up with my goal, yeah. right? So that's what I'm saying. So whatever your goal is, that's why I said there's a list of actions that you got to take and you don't have to do them all in one day. If you do one action every day towards your goal, you're good to go. But replying to a test, uh, posting on Instagram, all those things are not tasks that are going to move you towards the goal. Unless your goal is, for instance, I want to grow my followers on Instagram. So I want to follow hundred people and unfollow whatever, whatever the trick that you guys are trying to do. Yeah. Then maybe that will line up. But if it's paying a bill, if it's writing an email, if it's replying to a task, if it's uh, updating your website, if it's uh, putting a po uh, blog post or whatever it may be, those are to-do lists that anybody could do it. And the way I tell my team to start and more members to start is start from the two minutes task, complete them first, because it's going to take you no more than 20 minutes, right? If we are yeah. answering truthfully, two minutes tasks, 20 minutes you're done. And then all you got to do is focus your max potential, like you said, on your actions, towards a goal. It's a big explanation for a small question, but I think if you start thinking of it differently, like ask yourself, is this action that I'm about to do today going to move my goal or is it just a to-do list? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, what I really hear underneath all that too is like the busy work piece versus it's, it's, the, the highly focused, laser focused on the goal, right? So you go, you okay. want to be productive. Because you've got to answer email as a business owner, but you can delegate it. You can also set a specific amount of time for it and be time really block. block planned about it. You know, so there's different strategies. And so I hear in it, it's a prioritization of the actions that you're going to take because they're all actions ultimately, but the yeah. high priority action steps that you're talking about are the ones where you're thinking, is this actual action going to take the move the needle forward, get me to my goal and all that other stuff needs to be got done. But then in a lot of ways, because you're saying the two minutes, it's like Parkinson's law. You're going two minutes. Here's the two minute tasks, knock them off. So they're not taking up space and energy in my head. And then I can move to the really important stuff. That's moving exactly. You, you're moving that away from you. So half your list is gone. And yeah. maybe one of the two minute tasks is to create a time block to answer 30 minutes emails. Yeah. Yeah. I usually, when emails come in, if it's a priority, I already know I got to respond to this guy. It's important. Yeah. I pin it. This is not important. Let it let it flood in my box. And yeah. then my, my team I literally goes through my inbox or my emails. That they'll, and then if it's something that I need to respond, they'll get my attention. 
Yeah. And if it's not, they will know the answer and, and they'll uh, like all support emails, all those things. Right. Yeah. But I don't look at them. So again, but it starts from your vision. What is it? I mean, how you want to be, cause I usually tell my business community, cause we have like some membership with a business community. They all want to be six, seven figure CEOs. Well, the task that you're about to do today, is this what a six or seven figure CEO are going to do? Yeah. If you're answering a support email, is that what a six or seven figure CEO will do? And if the answer is yes, they keep doing it and you find that the answer that it's wrong. But if not, <laughs> right, because yeah. I, I doubt, yeah. right, I doubt, do you think that, you know, the top CEOs will start answering support emails or will start packing their product or yeah. they will have the employees? So that's why I said, what mindset do you want to use? Do you want to use the CEO mindset or the employee yeah. mindset? They're both okay, but just decide which hat do you want to wear. And the one you want to wear, you got to act, be that person every day until you reach that goal. So and powerful. So true, right? Because you're, you're putting on the hat. I love that you said that. I always say there's three hats you've got to wear, you know, as an entrepreneur, or as a business builder. And, and in that you are adopting and owning and stepping into the vision of yourself as, as the seven, six, seven or eight figure CEO. Whatever you want to be. And really embody that and go, what would that person do? And be that person today, you know. So I always, I always coach from the be do have model of like, it's not that when you get to seven figures, all of a sudden you're gonna be a seven figure CEO. You have no. gotta be there way before that. You gotta adopt the mindset, the habits, all of the things that are gonna get you there along the way. So it's like, I, I love you and I are so aligned in these ways. It's really awesome. <laughs> and that, that's what I teach. I mean, look, we're doing a quick episode over here, and it's hard to do that. That's why we go in depth over each topic in my community yeah. is because it really takes, because a lot of people say, well, great. Let me be that six, seven figure CEO, six, seven, six figure CEO. Well, what do I got to do? What, where's the book? There's no books with steps that says, if you want to be a six figure, here are the rules to follow. If you want to be a seven, try this yeah. book. It is not. You got to look at other people that you look up to. Yeah. And, and you say, you know, that's a six, seven figure CEO or seven figure CEO. Well, what does he do every day? How does right. he show up? How does he walk? How does he talk? How does he speak? And you got to start adopting. It doesn't matter if you like, if it's the same business as yours or not, you know, yeah. so the people I love to look up to like the customer service, uh, service of Zappos, like I really love their customer service. So we try to see what it is that they do different. So I respond, we, well, not, I mean, but a company responds to any email that we receive that has support issues. I've also noticed when I have problems with other companies that I purchase, if I send them an email, they don't respond. I was like, well, customer service sucks, but yeah. we respond whether they like it or not. We at least respond to give them the courtesy yeah. If it is whether it's a ten dollar product or a hundred thousand uh, dollar product, that doesn't matter. That's the mindset. That's my core values of the business. You know, so you look up to somebody that you admire and write down your core values, your mission statement, and then you go from there. Awesome. Okay. But there's a lot more. Obviously, we, oh we yeah, can, yeah, yeah. We can talk that, for hours and hours and exactly. hours. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what are the top three max potential habits that you think got you where you are today. Yeah. So I. That's a good question. I, uh, I think, first of all, is being productive. 100% is just being productive and understanding that my time is limited and I'm never going to have that more time deposited into my account. Money, I will always have coming in and out, but time is more valuable than anything. Uh, I think my, my second one is actually understanding the core values for me. What is it that I want to be? Who it is that I want to spend the time with again? And what's more important to me? And for years, it was what's, what was more important to me is more money, more sales. Now more important to me is God, then my family, then business, you know, and it doesn't have to be the same thing, but that was more important to me as well. And then the third thing is procrastination, understanding why you're procrastinating. And when, if you keep procrastinating, understand that it's going to cost you. I told you in the beginning that I wanted to start this in 2014. I started 2017 sales for 2017 were about $300,000, right? So if I started at 2014, that's a million dollars. If you do the math that I lost because I procrastinated. So the mm -hmm. best time to start something is right now, not tomorrow, not next week, not in an hour. It's right now. If it's something that's important to you, then go after it right now. Don't worry about, is this the right way or the wrong way? Start going. And this is going to line up even more. When you start going, you can create a momentum and with action, you'll get clarity. So that's, that's mine. Hopefully it kind of, <laughs> yeah. up, but that's mine. Yeah, that's great. I, I want to know, cause you said understanding why you're procrastinating. Can you give listeners some insight into why you think people procrastinate? I think people procrastinate because it's maybe it's not as important to them. Maybe they really want to do it and they don't know how to do it. 
maybe they just, it's not as important. I actually did an episode about it about a week ago in my community. It's like really make a list of all the things that you are procrastinating. Like maybe there's one thing that you are want to do, right? This is the one task that you want to do and you've been procrastinating. So make a list of all the reasons why you should do it. Okay. Why, why you're not doing it. Like I'll make a list of all the things why you're not doing it and then make another list. What's the consequence if I don't do it? What's going to happen if I don't launch this product? What's the consequence? And then weigh it out. Because sometimes you say, you know, you know, that's not even important. I don't want to deal with it at all. But actually, when you look at the consequences, if you launch, so my consequence were if I don't launch this planner, I'm not going to impact people. I'm not going to help them achieve their goals. I'm not going to see change in their lives. It's not going to fulfill me as I want it to. Fulfill. And then it's like, okay, I want to create this. So make a list of all two and weigh the differences and then decide, Maybe it's not as, because sometimes it's not as important, right? Yeah. Yeah. You realize it's, it's you're, you're, you're focusing on something you don't even really want to create. <laughs> exactly. And that yeah. it's just bothering you in your mind. So definitely that's why I said anything that you wanted to do and you haven't make a list, at least it's not bothering. Cause sometimes yeah. like for me, uh, we're launching our podcast and I've been putting it off. I've recorded 20 episodes, but I've been putting it off because there are other things that are more important to me. However, yeah. I've made a list and the consequences, if I don't do this, I'm going to impact less and less people. I'm not going yeah. to put it out and help people. So we're launching ours in two weeks, right? So it's, nice. that's why it's something that when you make a list, you kind of weigh the difference. And sometimes I do things that, well, it's actually not important. So I don't care. Yeah. So it's done. So you don't even have to think about it anymore. Yeah. You're emptying out your hard drive. I, I always like to tell people also that procrastination is a symptom of when you say, you know, it might not be something you want to do. You might be out of alignment, which also is a clue to who to which tasks to delegate things to. 100%. Right. Yeah. So it's like, if you go, I keep procrastinating this, I keep procrastinating this. Why am I procrastinating? And instead of doing that, go, okay, it's not something I enjoy doing in my business. It's a perfect thing to delegate. Exactly. And that's why it all lines up to being productive, to really understanding what you align, what's important to you. Yeah. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to do everything. Most people think that if I don't do this, I'm not going to be successful. If I don't do this, this is not going to like, what is important to you? More important to me than anything is my family is spending time with my kids. That's more important to me than anything. If I had to choose, that's what I want, you know, but I also know that the reason I'm doing this business is because it's going to give me, and I also take this to another step uh, is define your success. What does success mean to you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Most people so different don't know. for everybody. It's different. But yeah. what social media does is you put all those posts and say, if you wake up and read and work out and eat and this, you're successful because that's what Jeff Bezos does. Great. But that's him, not me. Yeah. For me, being successful is being to, to spend more time with my kids and family and work whenever I want to without worrying about bills. So when I get to that level, I know that that's successful. Now, my, I might get there and something else will show up, but understand what it is. And then someone else, you know what? That's for me successful. When I look at other people, that's their success. It doesn't line up with mine. And yeah. then from there, you can just relax and breathe and just do your thing. So you don't have to, to do that. But I mean, it's, it's, look, we can talk for hours, as you know, that we can carry out 25 different episodes just <laughs> on, on all these topics. So true. Are you, you going to do guests on your podcast? You know what? I'm sorry. Are you going to interview guests? Are you going to do short clips? Awesome. Well, no. we'll talk more of that. I can't, oh, of course, I, cause I want to be, uh, that's one of my goals too. I always go, Oh, I love interviewing people for my podcast and I haven't reached out as much to be on other people's podcasts. No, so definitely. You're, you're already on the yeah. list. Everybody that I've been on their show, I want him on my show for sure, because yeah. I think it lines up and, and yeah, so, so it's already been recorded for a while, but I always been putting it off because I have my membership community. I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching that I focus awesome. on the most. What, what's it going to be called? The 90X Mastery Podcast. 90X Mastery Podcast. Okay, yeah. so listeners, be looking for it. Tell yeah. everyone where else they can find you. And I know that you have a promotion for everyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Journal. Exactly. So, no, yeah. So, if, if you liked and you want to try the journal, give yourself a chance, give yourself an opportunity. And I always say this sounds bad. Give yourself an opportunity to fail in the next 90 days. Give yourself the opportunity to fail in the next 90 days. See what happens. Heck, you know, so now you're starting worst case scenario. I'm going to fail. Great, good. Now let me move forward. So you can get it on 90xgoalplanner.com. Uh, we're giving you a 25% off, which is potential habit, potential habits 25. And uh, Amanda, you can link it in the show notes, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, so you guys can use that. If you didn't like the planner, you don't want to do it, great. Take a piece of paper and use the steps I gave you. It will work the same way. The planner is just there to remind you to be your accountability buddy. It's going to show up in your face every day and then you're gonna open it and use it now also one more thing when you get the planner 
for your daily actions. For when you're writing your goals and your why's, it might take a little bit longer. You should not spend more than five to seven minutes a day. That's it. It's not like, okay, I'm going to have to go to college for this. No, no, no. Five <laughs> to seven minutes a day to fill up the planner because it was the reason I created very minimalistic and not complicated because some planners out there that, heck, I had to go to college to figure out what they want. Because it's like, it has to come with a course and, and look, you don't you like so many questions. No, it's like, what is my intention? Boom, yeah. actions, go yeah. execute. Done. I love That's it. it. All of you know me. You know this is the Max Potential Habits podcast and I, I, I am an NFA, so no fucking around coach, right? I'm always about like quick, implementable, actionable strategies. And that was why I bought this planner because I tend to only use my, I have a journal that's kind of like a mixed journal planner. And I don't, you know, there's a lot of journals and planners out there. And when I saw yes. this one, I was like, yes, straight to the point. So for all of you listening, you know that I don't mess around. I really think it's a powerful journal. So check it out. And I de or powerful planner. It's, it's definitely different than a journal. I would say I yes, call it it's, a planner versus a journal. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a planner. It's going to give you the systems. And if you want to learn more about us, it's a 90 X business.com. Yeah. If you want to get the planner, it's 90 X goal planner. Dot com use the code to get 25 and yeah, yeah and, love to and hear from you. one more plug on there on your website there's a lot of good stuff to show what's inside of it which i yes. also really liked it, i was like i knew exactly what i was gonna get and that made me intrigued because yeah that's not always one, one more thing actually if you go to my instagram handle which is 90xgoalplanner.com you can um in the link in my bio you can literally download all three pdfs for like four bucks so all three PDFs of the three planners that we offer, they're all similar. One is smaller, one is bigger, one is with color. Yeah. If you don't want to invest in the planner yet, then you can download the PDF and see how it looks and then decide to execute on the purchase. Yeah. But hey good. guys, give yourself the opportunity to fail in 90 days and let me know what happens. After. Awesome. All kinds of good stuff. Thank you so much. It's been a joy to have you on. Thank Great you so tips, much for tons me. of insight. Um, I will be back soon, everyone. I hope that you got a lot of benefit out of this. Make sure that you tag us on social media. When you get your planner, take a picture of, with, you know, with this episode, snap it out to all of the different social media channels that you love with our hashtags and have an incredible week where you thrive and feel alive. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Max Potential Habits Podcast. If you're liking what you've heard, it would be so incredibly awesome if you would subscribe to the channel and leave a five-star rating and a written review. This helps me help more people while we grow our NFA community so we can rock it out together. For Max Potential Habits resources, go to nfacoaching.com where you can access all of my resources. There's free eBooks, PDF checklists, a journal template, a business mindset meditation kit, and so much more. Plus links to NFA Coaching on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And if you're super serious about up-leveling, there's also a link to schedule a free consult to work with me in group or one-on-one -on -one coaching. Until next time, I hope you have a Max Potential Habits Day where you get inspired to do whatever it takes to transform into the most empowered version of yourself so you can lead a rich, thriving, kick-ass life and business.